nosotros. ¡Wow! Bullshit. If she wants to take the castle, she'll have to murder thousands of innocent people first. <laughs> so much for the breaker of chains. I promised you I would look you in the eye and speak directly if I ever thought you were making a mistake. This is a mistake. What else are we going to do, Varys? Do not become what you have always struggled to defeat. What's your plan? I'm here to free the world from tyrants. That is my destiny. And I will serve it, no matter the cost. In the meantime, demand Cersei's surrender. Offer her her life in exchange for the throne. No. Perhaps it's good the people see that Daenerys Stormborn made every effort to avoid bloodshed. And Cersei Lannister refused. <sighs> they should know whom to blame when the sky falls down upon them. I've served tyrants most of my life. They all talk about destiny. Fuck off, Varys. Her life has convinced her that she was sent here to save us all. How do you know she wasn't? She just fucking did, you prick. Then there's the problem of Jon Snow. He's not a problem to you, Varys. He's an opportunity. Perhaps it's actually a solution. You know them both. Tell me, who do you think would make a better ruler? He's temperate and measured. He's a man. A man. 
which makes it more appealing to the lords of Westeros, whose support we are going to need. Some misogynist bullshit, then. They could rule together as king and queen. She's too strong for him. She'd bend him to her will, as she already has. You could temper her worst impulses, as you have. It's over for you, Varys. You know where my loyalty stands. I'm done you with know you, I mate. I will never betray the realm. What is the realm? It's just bullshit. Vast continent, home to millions of people, most of whom don't care who sits on the Iron Throne. Millions of people, many of whom will die if the wrong person sits on that throne. Uh, this is a great conversation. So what happens to her? Pause. See, now this, this is why I have an issue with Varys, is because the actual things he's saying about what the realm represents, everything I could absolutely agree with, but he's a hypocrite because he is willing to kill, to see people killed, to have many people killed for what he thinks is his destiny. But anyone else talks about it and they're a tyrant. Like, how much conflict is Varys responsible for? How many deaths is Varys responsible for? Because of the games he's played, trying to get his favourite person on the throne, and then realising, no, I don't like this person anymore because they've displeased me, so now I'm going to go for someone else. I don't think his loyalty is actually to anyone. And I, re I think this is the end for him. I don't... This is treason. He is opening up. Tyrion's going to have to tell Daenerys now. And then Varys is dead. And that is going to... It's going to cause an absolute fucking nightmare. And how is that going to serve the people of the realm? Oh, God. This is such a great episode, though. It's such a great episode. I'm really surprised. I thought this was like a rest, this episode. And we've lost another dragon, which I'm not. I'm still crying about. I think I think we're about to lose Varus. I really think we're about to lose Varus. He made a promise and Daenerys made a promise. And they were both really clear about that promise. He's toast. Nobody is going to like Daenerys after this episode, but... I will play. Please. <clears throat> Don't. It's over, mate. I've spoken as honestly as I can. You're fucked. Each of us has a choice to make. I pray we choose wisely. I've made my choice. Honestly, if I was Danny, I'd be going back to Essos now. I would burn Cersei to death. And then I would turn my dragon around and I'd go, fine, have the fucking continent, you selfish pricks. And I'd go back to Essos. Honestly, that's what I would do. Euron Greyjoy ambushed Queen Daenerys and her fleet. One of the dragons was killed, several ships destroyed, Miss Sande captured. I always wanted to be there when they execute your sister. Seems like I won't get the chance. It's going to be tough for him. He's loved her his whole life. Stay here. Stay with me. Please. <sighs> it's 
monster. I pushed a boy out of tower window, crippled him for life. For Cersei, I strangled my cousin with my own hands just to get back to Cersei. I would have murdered every man, woman, and child in River Run for Cersei. <laughs> She's hateful. And so am I. Fuck off! You're no! What are you doing? <sighs> I feel sick. I feel fucking sick. Fuck off. Dragon, please, not another dragon. <sighs> you fucking bitch. Queen Cersei demands Daenerys's unconditional surrender. If she refuses, Miss Ende of Nath will die here and now. Kyburn, help me save this city. My lord, I am only a mouthpiece for our queen. Your queen. You're not a monster. I know this. I know this because I've seen it. You've always loved your children. More than yourself. More than Jamie. More than anything. I beg you. If not for yourself, then for your child. If you have any last words, now is the time. This is Butler the Bastards all over again. You... It's over. God 
damn it. That was Battle of the Bastards. Where you know... You know that John shouldn't be charging. But you also know that there is no way on earth that any human being could withstand that level of provocation. They killed Rhaegal and I swear to God, I thought for a minute that John was on Rhaegal. I, I was really relieved when I they told me later on. I really thought we'd lost the... F I don't know how we get through this, to be honest. Um, or what we do after it. Because everything is just fucked. I think everyone, basically, outside of Daenerys's most loyal guard, is done with her now. Thanks very much for saving all of our lives, but we don't want you to be our queen. So there's not going to be any reciprocity there whatsoever by the looks of it. And do you know what? If I was Danny, I wouldn't even want to fucking rule this kingdom now. I really wouldn't. I'd be like, you know what, have it. I know I've already said it. Just fuck it. I'm going to kill Cersei and then I'm taking my armies. I'm taking my dragons. I'm going back to Essos and just carry on there. I don't, I don't even understand what the allure of Westeros is anyway half the time, to be honest, because no one seems to be loyal to fucking anybody, really. It's just constant bullshit. This episode has fucked me up. I'm so angry. Everyone is letting us down. I think Jamie is going to kill Cersei. I don't think he's going to save her. But it's kind of not the point. That was a horrible thing that just happened with him going and he didn't, you know, he didn't say to Brienne, you know, I'm off to kill her. I'll be back. I love you. That was not what he said. So I'm only thinking about what I want to happen, which is a twist that he is actually hateful enough to kill her. And he's angry that she's done all of this, everything he's done for her and he's he's helped create the tyrant that Cersei is. <sighs> Arya, thank God, is on her way to King's Landing with the Hound. So it looks like the Hound is after the mountain and Arya is after Cersei. And it just awaits to be seen. I don't think everyone's going to make it out. I think either John and Danny, or John or Danny, ditto Tyrion and Jamie, or Tyrion or Jamie are gonna die in this final phase of things, probably next episode. Because I don't think every mission can complete itself. By that I mean either John and Danny's mission to, to write Cersei fails, but Arya is able to neutralize her through her assassin stuff or the other way round. I think if John watched Arya die the way that Grey Worm and Danny just had to watch Missande die, there won't even be ashes left of what they're gonna do to King's Landing. So either they're gonna kill off Danny just to simplify things and then reluctant John will have to be king or it's gonna be even more complex because if, if we lose John, then we've then it's going to be a situation. So I kind of almost would prefer that to happen, I think, just for the sake of the complexity. Because I think it would almost be too neat now. If Daenerys is killed, it's like, try and manage down our expectations and then there'll be some sort of relief. And I'll be okay if it ends that way. It just won't be my favourite potential ending. I'm so angry at Varys, even though... In, like, the real world, if we were living in the real world, I would probably have a lot of agreement um, with what he's saying. But the problem is, I've heard this, like, fucking five times now from Varys, campaigning for, like, five different monarchs. And I'm starting to call bullshit now. He's just, like, whatever the latest fad is, he gets... He's a bandwagon man. That is Varys. He's the bandwagon man. 
he doesn't stick around when things get tough. And things are tough. And it just drives me the fucking insane that he's like, oh, she thinks she's here to save us. She just fucking did. For the umpteenth time. It... <sighs> really not okay. I'm really not okay. I'm that angry. I will. I would support Daenerys in, in fulfilling her threat now. I need him gone because he's not only like got an issue with her. Like he's he's full on a little finger in the fuck out of this now, and we don't need another little finger. Thank you. So my money is on Varys dying. I don't think this plot's gonna work. And I think it's going to end with Varys dying. And I'm totally willing to admit at this point, it's because I'm a Daenerys loyalist. She's the queen I have chosen. And I believe in her. So I'm I'm with Danny. I don't get why Sansa is so hostile to Danny. Ultimately, I really don't. They have both been through fucking hell and back. They've got so much in common. I don't understand why Sansa has to be so hostile. I can understand why she would maybe go, I'm not quite ready to let go of the North, I'm not qu quite ready, but it's like, it's way worse than that, like she's got a proper burning hostility towards her, that wasn't even lessened by the fact that while she was cowering down in the dungeons, clutching a little bit of dragon glass, Daenerys was out there on her dragons and then swinging a dragon glass sword that she'd never lifted in life. I just... As frustrated as I am, that's why I love this show. Totally going to get a different reaction on this episode from where your personal loyalties lie. You know, if I was a Sansa loyalist, I would probably feel very different. But I'm a Daenerys loyalist, so this is how the show has occurred to me. And that is what I think is one of the best things about this show, is it does change based on whose team you're, you're on, primarily. And it isn't universal who everyone's like with um and, and most bonded to as, as a character back to dragonstone i'm ecstatic because i'm thinking oh, i'm so fucking glad we're out of out of the north really done with it i actually realize in this episode i don't even want danny to be queen of the seven kingdoms anymore because i don't want her to have to deal with all this bullshit and i do wonder if like being a person of color um and a gay woman and, and experiencing life like as an outsider when you're kind of locked out from communities at times because of just people say it's not anything to do with who you are or what you do or anything it's just because you are this color or you have this sexuality you know i mean it's not just me or people everywhere then you're not one of us and i think you do have a different experience and maybe response to that if it's something that you've lived through than if it's something that you just understand theoretically as a thing and that's i think part of the reason why danny's journey is so important to me it's a very good way of telling that story now Daenerys is more alone than she's been probably since we saw her in season one. Because Varys couldn't give two shits about her. Like, Varys is ready for her to die. That's really clear. Everything that has happened. And he's just like, fuck her, done. Pff, another monarch, off we go. On to the next. I'd never trust that man. Tyrion has divided loyalties. His the opponent is Cersei, his sister. The battleground is King's Landing, the city he was raised in. And up in the north, he's in love with Sansa. So even Tyrion is not I think he's shown remarkable loyalty this episode, but he's really having to try. I don't think Tyrion is ride or die yet. Jorah Missande and Grey Worm are Danny's ride or dies. 
And we've now lost two of them. And Grey Worm is fucking in pieces. They... She's down to one dragon. Oh, Regal, I can't... I never thought I would be saying this after this episode in a million years. But that episode was somehow managed to be worse than episode three. Because episode three, at least we had a victory. Like, we won, we killed the Night King. This episode is depressing. In, at a core level, in a totally different way. And I cannot even imagine what we've got to come now. I don't love to hate Cersei anymore. I hate Cersei. To pieces. To, 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 I would, ugh. There were so many surprises in this episode. I haven't even, like, the whole first section of it now with Jamie got with Brienne and everything. It's just, in any other episode, in any other season, Jamie getting with Brienne would be the biggest deal in the episode. Because it is the, cul that you saw how excited I was about it. It was the culmination of, like, seasons and seasons. And I just, I can't be excited about it now because that episode has left me destroyed. And Miss Sandy's dying word, Dracaris. Do it, Danny. I'm with her. I'm with Miss Sandy. I'm with Danny. Burn that bitch out of that red keep now. I've had it. And Jamie's wandering into this mess for I don't know what reasons. Honestly, I don't. I really, really hope it is to kill Cersei. Because to have such an arc and we finally get to the penultimate, you know, and I knew something was wrong. I did say when we saw him awake after first sleeping with Brienne, I did wonder that looked like he was thinking that didn't feel like it did with Cersei in a bad way. I'm hoping he was led there thinking, as long as Cersei's alive, the woman I love is not going to be safe. And then he got it confirmed by what Cersei did with Euron Greyjoy. And they killed a dragon. John, John can't now ride a dragon. This is why I'm worried for John more than Danny right at this moment. He sent Ghost north of the wall. He didn't even hug him. And that worries me. That he sent Ghost North and his dragon is dead. And I... The f I can't believe... This is the hardest review I've ever had to do. This is why I say I wasn't even like this in last week's review. Once I'd stopped crying, I managed to just about stop crying. But the Sunday was killed by the mountain. Chopped her head off. <sighs> and Grey Worm's face and Daenerys's face. That was what I mean about the Battle of the Bastards moment. You know, you think of Jon's face when he was looking at Ramsay and he was grinning and look at Danny in that moment. It's the same feeling. It's someone that you love. Butchered. While the person who butchered them is just laughing in your face. And in that moment, John and Danny had exactly the same instinct. Which was, I'm going to kill you. Like, I'm going to rip your heart. And I I really need Cersei to die next episode. I cannot. I cannot have this show end with her winning. I can't. My God, how did they make it worse? I think I'm going to stop it there for now. If I have any other thoughts, I'll make another video and put it up in the week. God, they ripped my guts out that episode. Until the next time, bye-bye.